गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई एम गौरव गुप्ता एज यूर मैथमेटिक्स टीचर टूडे वी विल डिस्कस क्लास इलेवेंथ चैप्टर फोर द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज पी एम आई एंड वट्स द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ पी एम आई इज पी स्टैंड फॉर प्रिंसिपल एम स्टैंड फॉर मैथमेटिकली एंड आई स्टैंड फॉर इंडक्शन सो द नेम ऑफ द चैप्टर इज प्रिंसिपल ऑफ मैथमेटिकली इंडक्शन This is our first lecture on this topic so i request to everyone please listen to me carefully and watch from start to till and again i want to say there is no need to continuously note down that i will write because i will have given time to you to take as a screenshot or make as a note so before to start the video i request to everyone If you like my video, then to subscribe my channel, Gorang Gupta Math Classes. So this is for your information. Because whenever you subscribe my channel, you automatically got notification. Whatever I upload my new video, you can got automatically by a notifications message. So don't forget to subscribe my. channel so i will not dis, uh, waste your time so come on our first topic the topic is basically based on reasoning so the reasoning uh, will everyone will be know about what is the reasoning you have to find out the reason why it is so so such type of question is start from your class 1 to up so but here what type of reasoning that we have to study in this lecture you have to clear in your minds as i am taking an example of a reasoning for example i am talking a number series reasoning you have to given the reason what's the next number in series for example i write 1 3 and 5 and take 3 slash and you have to decide what's the next number will be as you know the first method is you clearly if we see that these are the odd numbers and starting from 1 so your first odd number is 1 second odd number is 3 third number is 5 then fourth number will be 7 fifth number will be 9 and sixth number will be 11 so we have try to find the reason why it is so so we find the reason because 1 3 5 are the odd numbers and these are the continuously odd numbers starting from the 1 so we can easily find out the next three or you can find any numbers because we uh, already find the reason what the reason behind the such type of reasoning so this is the basic example of a reasoning so this chapter is basically based on reasoning so in this we have discussed different types of reasoning but we are focus only one type of reasoning because um, today we will discuss chapter 4 and the chapter 4 is basically based on your one type of reasoning i am right here different types of reasoning like your inductive reasoning then deductive reasoning and so have we have different types of reasoning also like logical reasoning and so on but we are focus only two types of reasoning but today we will discuss only one type of reasoning because the whole chapter is based on only one type of reasoning that is your chapter 4 so the main topic is inductive reasoning chapter 4 the chapter whole chapter 4 is based on only one type of reasoning is called inductive reasoning next deductive reasoning this chapter is based and this chapter will come in your 14th number so this is your chapter 14 so we will discuss this type of reasoning in details in chapter 14 so we are focus only here one type of reasoning but we have to discuss the difference between such type of the reasoning so that we can create its base uh, how we can proceed to our 14 chapter so firstly we have two types of reasoning one is your inductive reasoning and second one is your deductive reasoning what's the difference between the inductive reasoning and the deductive reasoning we have to follow ha uh, what we have to follow we have to know about what's the facts and what's the result i mean to say we have to firstly we have to find out what's the fact what's the 
reason behind it which is really in your life which is true is called the facts and on the basis of facts we have to find out the conclusion it means in this type of reasoning we have given facts and we have to read the facts and decide what is the conclusion so such type of reasoning is called inductive reasoning again i repeat in this we have given some facts and we have to decide the conclusion so we have to move from facts to conclusion so facts are called your particular case because facts is related to someone particularly but conclusion is related to whole things so in this case the solution goes from particular case to general case again i repeat this in this type of inductive reasoning what we are given here we are got facts and we have to decide the conclusion so we have to move from facts to conclusion it means we have given facts and we have to read all the facts and decide what will be the conclusion so such type of reasoning is called inductive reasoning so this type of reasoning goes from the particular case to general case because facts are related to something particularly and if we conclude the result then it becomes generalized so in this case we move from particular case to generalized case so that type of reasoning is called your inductive reasoning i am taking an example socrates is a man i am saying socrates is a man hey socrates is a man second statement is all men are mortal i repeat the statements we have given two facts first fact it's socrates is a man and second fact is all men are mortal again i repeat first statement is socrates is a man and second statement is all men are mortal therefore now we have to read all these two facts and we have to decide the conclusion so we can read these two facts and decide because socrates is a man and all men are mortal so we can conclude that socrates is mortal so this is the reason and we can say that this is the conclusion we can conclude socrates is a mortal again i repeat that we have two facts if these two facts are true then we proceed that the conclusion will also be true again i repeat that if two facts are true then the conclusion will also be true our first fact is socrates is a mortal and second fact is all men are mortal i write here so if socrates is a man and all men are mortal then we can conclude that socrates is mortal this is our the conclusion so we move from particular case to generalized case so this type of reasoning is called inductive reasoning the whole chapter is based on this in this we have to given some facts so such in this we have given statement in terms of your mathematical expression and if such statement is true so firstly we have to check this statement is true or not then we have take it is true for some arbitrary value then if it is true then the next one is also true i again repeat if it is true then it may be true i again repeat in this chapter what we have to we have take inductive reasoning and what we have to do pro, follow the procedure in this we have given facts and we have to do conclusion same here when we are doing start to doing is question which is based on similar things firstly we have to take facts and we have carefully read the facts and decide the conclusion if it is true then this statement is also true so then we take is mathematical statement again we take an arbitrary values arbitrary values if the statement is true for such arbitrary values like k it is state this statement is true for arbitrary values of k then the next statement will also be true this if it is true then we can conclude this statement is also true so same procedure we will follow in our questions i hope you understand me and this concept will be more clear when we are start to do its questions so our next topic 
is deductive reasoning which you will study in your class 11 chapter 14 in this we have to given some conclusion and we have to find out its fact it means we are doing the reciprocal in here we are facts and we have to decide the conclusion but in this case we already have conclusion and we have to decide the facts so such type of reasoning is called deductive reasoning deductive means deduction we deduct mean result if that is you have result and you find out it's on the particular case so in this we have given generalized case and we have to follow it on the particular case so it's suppose in this case we have particular case and we have to do generalize but in this case we have generalized case and we have to follow it or we have to do it particular case so this is this type of reasoning are basically reciprocal of each other for example a is a divisible by 2 that is a conclusion we can say that 8 is divisible by 2 it is true because if we divide 8 by 2 we get 4 it is that is we have concluded so this statement is a conclusion or generalized you can say that everybody everyone can say that this is generalized but in this case Socrates is a man but if you don't know who is Socrates the name will be a girl and then the name will be a boy also but this statement is true because 8 is divisible by 2 it's a mathematical proof now second statement is any number divisible by 2 is an even number this statement is also true because the definition of even number what it say it say if any number divisible by 2 the number is a even number so this statement is also a conclusion so these two statements are conclusion means we have already true then the third statement will also be true so these two statements are generalized case and we have to find its particular case if 8 is divisible by 2 and any number divisible by 2 so we can say that 8 is an even number so we associate 8 is an even number means we are associating it with a particular case so I hope you understand this please make a note first so I hope you understand this this is a base for a chapter now we will follow up to proceed to our question please make a note first so now we proceed how to do questions this chapter is very important why this chapter is important because this chapter gives so many relations that will help you to crack your competitive exams if you remember such type of relation then easily you can crack the exam either it is to be NDA or your SSC it is mainly focused based on your JWE main it means if you want to go for higher education or in your IITs International Institute of Technology then such type of exam easily be cracked by if you have learned all these relations because these relations become the base to solve your typical questions so in mathematics I write some mathematical statements first statement here 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on up to n if we add them 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on we get a total that can be easily calculated by using a formula n into n plus 1 divided by 2 it means if we, have, if we have given so many terms and we have to calculate its sum then it is not possible to calculate each value with the another value so because this becomes fast if i take 1 plus 2 plus 3 and last value is 100 then it is not possible to calculate the sum so in this we have to find the relationship or you have to find out the results if you learn that result you can easily calculate the result value so we have so many statements so one by one whenever you start to do question firstly you have a uh, firstly you have to note is in the first phase of each question because each question gives you one relation and that relation will be helped to solve so many questions so this statement is not only your question but it is a relation or it is a result that will help to solve all your typical questions so that's why i'm saying this chapter is very important 
for your competitive exams and one question will be put in your final exam whatever you belongs to any boards whatever to haryana boards punjab board up board maharashtra board cbse board or any other boards you will definitely got one question from this chat so i write three results we have so many results but i mainly write three results because these are connected to each other and we can find the solution by by as we already discussed in class 10th first 1 plus 2 plus 3 its value is into n into n plus 1 by 2 where it comes it comes from your series which is called arithmetic progression series ap this note your first term is here our first term is a is equal to 1 and the common difference 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 it means this is series is a ap series so we get d is equal to 1 and we know the formula for to calculate the sum of an ap series what's the formula sn is equal to n by 2 2 into a plus n minus 1 into d this is the formula to calculate the sum of a ap series so if we put these values here n is because we have taken n values so the sum is n n by 2 2 into a a is the first term which is equal to 1 plus n minus 1 and d is again 1 now put these values n by 2 2 into 1 is equal to 2 if we multiply by 1 n minus 1 what's the result n by 2 2 minus 1 1 and we get 1 so this is a result n into n plus 1 divided by 2 and i write here so such type of relation can be easily calculated by as we already discussed in class 10 on that standard you can calculate the relationship but here it's not important to calculate the relation but it's important to remember such relation because this becomes the base so each question has gives you one relation it means This is the base for to solve many questions. So firstly, write all the questions in your first page so that you can memorize or remember all the relation to do a high speedy calculations for a typical questions. So we have to start our how to do to solve questions. So in this case, I draw some diagram. In this, your these are the boards. You can see that it's a plate. You can see that. it is a marker so if i suppose i send different markers because i taken boards so these are the copies when the zoom anything which are sending so if for example if i push the board one naturally it will fall and if it is fall then it fall the other board also then second will strike to third fall the third so second will Fall third, third fall will again and again. It means this board fall this board and this push this board. So there is a continuous chain. So each board will be fall. But now our question is that is we have to push only the first board? Not. We generalize it. If I push first board and the whole boards are fall down it means this boards follow the first push method it means if we push then it follow all the boards and all the boards are fall but now i'm choosing particular arbitrary value suppose i choose third and push them and push them then the third third will strike with the fourth and fall it and fourth will fall to fifth so this step will be continuous i hope you understand this concept it means if we follow to start our first term and it follow then we can choose any arbitrary values any one and apply the same logic on here if it is follow then it will again if i push 
the third board then this board will push to the fifth board and fall it so if this board follow the relation to fall down the board then this board also follow the relations again i repeat if this is true true means this follow the push relation and fall the board that is your relation because firstly i apply this board i push first board and it follow the relation it means uh, the board will be fall to next board so it fall the next board and next board will fall the next board so it means this board follow the relation now i am taking to choose any arbitrary numbers suppose k board and push them and it follow the relation then the next board will also follow the same relation i again repeats suppose if you push then naturally it will fall the next board so if it is statement is true then it is necessarily the next statement is also true the next board will also fall the its next board so the whole step all procedure we have to follow in such a manner again i repeat i am taking an example of cycle if i push one cycle so the first cycle will fall the next cycle if they are standing in a queue and if i choose any arbitrary cycle so now please listen to me if there are so many cycles are standing in a queue and i try to push one cycle then naturally the cycle will be fall down and if the first cycle will fall then naturally it fall try to follow to fall the next cycle and then the process is repeated second cycle try to follow the third cycle if i push first cycle and all the cycles will fall down it means the first cycle follow the relationship so in this case we have to take is it first cycle or first number is follow the relation or not these all relations are based totally on your natural numbers so keep in mind we have to take only the natural numbers when n belongs to all natural numbers so if we go to a particular cycle and try to push them then naturally it will fall i try to push arbitrarily arbitrary means we have to choose have to choose any way cycle because uh, uh, for example there are so 100 cycles in a queue and i choose 51 cycle and push them if the 51 cycle will fall then it is a compulsory 50 if 50 cycle will fall then it is compulsory to 51 next cycle will also fall the next cycle again i repeat if i firstly i push first cycle and the second cycle will fall it means first cycle follow the relationship that i have right so i choose now another cycle suppose i i am choosing 50 cycle 50th cycle and push them if this is statement is true if it is the statement is means is this cycle will fall then it's compulsory 51 that next of 50th 51 will also follow the relation 51 cycle will also be fall this is the step so in this first we have to take one if this statement is true i am taking an example please try to understand me okay our first relation is this please make a note first then we will try and to remember such relation i have take all this relation one by one with details i hope you will like my video please make a note first 
So now I am trying to do my very best. I am taking first question, or you can say that first relation that we already discussed. One plus two plus three plus up to n, which is equal to n into n plus one divided by two. And you have to check the validation of the statement. Is it this statement is true or not? You have to decide it. How we can validate or say ah this statement is true? So the method is called as your PMI. So we have to follow the same procedure as we as we already discussed. Firstly, we have to take uh, start from first because the natural number are start from one. These statements are totally based on your applicable to your natural numbers. So firstly, this is your mathematical statement and this is the result. And we have to check the validation of the state. So we have to take and start from first. So first, uh, this question uh, we have three steps. We have to follow in sequence and you get the result. So firstly, our first step is put put n is equal to one. This is your first step. In each question, you have to put n is equal to one. Then what will be the result? To check the validation of the statement is n is equal to one. Hold the statement true or not? We have to check it. If this hold the result, if this statement is true, then it will be continue to our next step, second step, and then we will go to third step. So firstly, we have to check at n is equal to one. n is equal to one indicates that we have to consider only one term, and this is the sum of your n term. So only one term is this. Which is equal to one because we are adding only one term. N is equal to one indicates that you are taking only one term. So we get one. This is our left hand side, and this one is our right hand side. Now we have to check our right hand side also. Here n is equal to one. Now put it here. One into one plus one divided by two, which is equal to one. Multiply one plus one two divided by two. Two cancel out with two, but we will get one. It means left hand side is equal to right hand side. So this state indicate that your first statement will fall. So now we have to follow our next step. What it say? We have to choose any arbitrary values. It means we have to choose any one. If it is true, then the next one is also true. We have to follow this step. So our second step, we have to choose any arbitrary value, and we have to take it it as a true. So we take it as a assume true. Second step is our put n is equal to k, where k is n positive integer and the values will be greater than 1 because we already takes the value n is equal to 1 so the value of k is greater than 1 so k is greater than 1 to have to choose this this is the our consideration so we have to take any arbitrary value k and we assume that this statement is true or n is equal to k we assume it is true we assume it is true so substitute n is equal to k in your relation so what we get p of k One plus two plus three plus up to k. So similarly, we put it on the right hand side also. We get k into k plus one divided by two. Firstly, you have to write first number before the last number also. Our last number is your n. Suppose I'm right. One plus two plus three plus four plus up to 
7. So, what number will come before the 7? Literally, 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. So, before 7, the number comes is 6. So, in every statement, you have to write first the first number before the last number. If the last number is here n, then what's the first number before it is n minus 1 because have we have to do 7 minus 1. So, this our statement is n minus 1. So, we can, I am taking here also, we have to put n is equal to k, k minus 1. So, if this statement will true, then the next statement will have to be true. If it is true, then ne next statement is true. This is our, our basic concept how to do such question. So, please make a note first, then we will proceed to our next step. So, please take it as your second equation. So, this one is your equation second. And you have to put it drop because the main role of this question depends only on this statement. So, please make a block. This is our main important instruction that we have to follow. Now, if this statement is true, then this will lead to be true for your next statement also. Now, we have third step. We have to take our third step. In the third step, we have to take its, the next value of k. Then the next value of k is k plus 1. It means we have to put n is equal to k plus 1. It also be true. Also be true. It means to prove. This one is your assume true. And in this we have to prove. The second statement is we are assuming true. And third step is we have to prove it. So it means we have to prove left hand side is equal to right hand side. And what we have to follow is put n is equal to k plus 1. Here statement p of k plus 1 is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to n minus 1. And what we have to put? n is equal to k plus 1. So, if we put k plus 1 and this minus 1 plus here we also put k n is equal to k plus 1 is equal to n here k plus 1 here n is k plus 1 plus 1 upon me 2. What will we got? Now simplify this. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to this becomes 1 cancel out with 1 we get k plus this one is k plus 1 which is equal to k plus 1 k plus 1 plus 1 it means k plus 2 k plus 2 is equal to 2. This is our third statement and we have to prove our third statement that is left hand side is equal to right hand side. So, please make a note first then we have to do to prove left hand side is equal to right hand side. Please make a note first. Now, we have to prove left hand side is equal to right hand side. So, we take the equation third and we have to use the result because uh, we are taking equation 2 is true. So, if this statement is true, then the third statement is true. So, we can take the assumed true as a true and to prove the third result. So, 
our right hand side is this k plus 1 into k plus 4 divided by 2 so we take our left hand side and we will make it to the right hand side if it is made equal then the statement is true so i am going to take our statement here look at 1 plus 2 i am writing here k plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to k plus k plus 1 is equal to k plus 1 k plus 2 divided by 2 now this do compare it if we compare such part this is basically nothing it is the equation 2 compare it 1 plus 2 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to k the whole statement is equal to k into k plus 1 divided by 2 so we put the value from the equation 2 substitute this value from the equation 2 so we are substitute this value from the equation this is equal to k into k plus 1 divided by 2 now put it here we get k into k plus 1 divided by 2 which is equal to plus this term as it is now we are clearly visible k plus 1 k plus 1 if in this no term is mentioned we are taking 1 so k plus 1 is common out to the both the terms so take a common k plus 1 k plus 1 is a common what we call called k by 2 plus 1 now simply add this k plus 1 if i take 2 as a common then we get k plus 2 and this is nothing k plus 1 into k plus 2 divided by 2 k plus 1 into k plus 2 because 2 can be written as to the whole k plus 1 into k plus 2 divided by 2 so this is your left hand side right hand side and this is your left hand side so left hand side becomes is equal to right hand side LHS is equal to RHS hence proof so in this manner you have to do proof all the question so please make a note first
so now i'm going to take out next question which is p of n is equal to 1 square 2 square 3 square up to n square which is equal to n into n plus 1 to n plus 1 divided by 6 so we have to follow the same step and prove left hand side is equal to right hand side firstly i again repeat we have to write one number before the last number because it's very easy to understand then uh, we have to put the values so firstly you have to write the first number before the last number and then the before number is n minus 1 so we can write it as 1 square 2 square 3 square if this is n square if last number is 8 then the first uh, before first number before the last number is 7 8 minus 1 is equal to 7 so before this the number is n minus 1 is whole square so our first step is put n is equal to 1 and to check this statement has valid or not step 1 put n is equal to 1 then n is equal to 1 it indicates we have only one terms n is equal to 1 we have only one term and one term is only one square and square of 1 is 1 now we have to check this right hand side this is our right hand side if we put here 1 1 into 1 plus 1 2 into 1 plus 1 divided by 6 1 multiply 1 plus 1 2 multiply 2 plus 1 3 divided by 6 6 by 6 which is equal to 1 it means p proof left hand side is equal to right hand side lhs is equal to rhs now we have to follow our next step we have to take a zoom step 2 let n is equal to k statement is true for n is equal to k we have consider that this statement is true n is equal to k now substitute n as a k so statement becomes p of k is equal to 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus up to our this we have to put n as a k so this becomes k minus 1 whole square plus mean k square is equal to k k plus 1 2k plus 1 divided by 6 this is our first equation so please uh, make it in close bracket because this is our main statement that is we have considered this statement is true now we have to take its next value to be true if it, this statement hold true then the next statement will also be true so step third we have to prove we have to prove for n is equal to k plus 1 so put n is equal to k plus 1 here the statement becomes k plus 1 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus here we have to put k plus 1 k plus 1 this minus 1 whole square plus n is k plus 1 whole square which is equal to k plus 1 here k plus 1 plus 1 into 2 
n is put as k plus 1 plus 1 divided by 6. So make it simplified form. k plus 1 k plus 1 plus 1 which is equal to k plus 2. Now multiply this what you will got 2k plus 2 plus 1 divided by 6 again simplify k plus 1 k plus 2 this becomes 2k plus 2 plus 1 2k plus 3 2k plus 3 the whole divided by 6 this is our right hand side which we have to prove now we have to take our left hand side firstly write in simplified form this is your 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus this becomes 1 will cancel out with 1 what we will got we got only k this becomes k square plus k plus 1 all square. this is our right hand side we have to prove this so now check it again 1 plus 2 plus up to last term is k square the whole value is equal to k into k plus 1 to k plus 1 divided by 6 so now substitute these values this value is equal to now I am writing line substituting this value from equation 2 we are substituting this value from the equation 2 so we have to write from here so please make a note first then I will rub the upper portion please make a note first so now I am writing here now this value is equal to k into k plus 1 to k plus 1 divided by 6 k into k plus 1 into 2k plus 1 divided by 6 we substitute this and the remaining terms will also be remain same plus k plus 1 whole square plus k plus 1 whole square we can write divide by 1 now k plus 1 is common out from the upper portion so if I take k plus 1 as a common but we will call k into 2k plus 1 divided by 6 plus k plus 1 divided by 1 now take it 6 as a LCM k plus 1 we take 6 as a common multiply it. k into 2k which we equal to 2k square plus k into 1 k plus we have to multiply 6 we get 6k plus 6 now solve it k plus 1 is this this is 2k square plus 6k on k 7k plus 6 divided by 6 now we have to factorize this 2k square plus 7k plus 6 and get the values in terms of factorization and what's the factor please make a note first so I can rub it so 2k square plus 7k plus 6 we have to factorize this what's the factor 4k plus 3k plus 6 now take 2k as a common we get k plus 2 here we take common 3 k plus 2 so k plus 2 again common we get 2k plus 3 so right here k plus 1 we factorize this k plus 2 2k plus 3 
divided by 6 and make a comparison with our right hand side k plus 1 k plus 1 k plus 2 k plus 2 2k plus 3 2k plus 3 divided by 6 divided by 6 means left hand side is equal to right hand side so we have proved so we have to do all the question in such manners i hope you like this video if you want to give some suggestion to me so comment on my youtube channel i appreciate i to give suggestion and how uh, what is what i am missing please tell so that i will add it in our next video so don't forget to subscribe my channel Goro Gupta Maths Classes. So I will take our next video for watching my video. I really thanks to all of you.